Hey guys, my name is Mark from Jazz Guitar Lessons and in this video we're going to look into the chord scale system and what to do about it and perhaps I'll suggest an alternative way that's much simpler, that's much much quicker to have been using and teaching for myself for improv. So let, let me give you a bit of background, alright? So when you're looking into what they call the Berkeley chord scale system, they would state something as follows, which if there's a C major chord, C major 7, C chords of sort, what we're supposed to play as improviser is the seven notes of the C major scale, so namely C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Alright, for that purpose, I have made a little jar, it's not jars of madness, it's a little bowl, and I have these tiles that are all the seven notes of the major scale, so C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and they're in that pot here, right? And yes, I'm the guy that went out and got my Scrabble box and got these tiles out, for example. So it means that, as an improviser, I will be playing a song, and eventually there's this chord that's supposed to be played by the band or the backing track, whatever, and at this point, what I have to conceive of is these seven tiles I put there in the in the basket, in the bowl. I wouldn't say this is a bad approach necessarily, but I would say that's a whole lot of information to handle myself as an improviser to make something that's supposed to sound good. And then the instruction is, well, now that you have that, you can more or less randomly wander within that scale and it's going to sound good. Uh, that's the approach. I think it's part of the, of the truth, but it's not the complete truth and I'm here to sort of suggest alternatives. So here's the very first alternative and I'll sort of sell it completely outright. I have two bowls. One has these seven tiles and this one has one tile in it. Look, it's the one. Can you guess which? Take a guess. You guys are with me? Yes, it's an E. The E note is a third degree of the scale, C, D, E, and I will sort of argue throughout this video that by doing that, we do most of the work without any of the confusion, the overwhelm, and we also afford ourselves a 7 to 3 resolution, a whole bunch of other benefits that just happen organically if this is all I look at. Number one, I will tell you why we are choosing this note, this is the third degree, so C, D, E, or C why we would choose that note as the, the one that we want to pick uh, amongst the whole tune, uh, the, the whole set of scale notes. So the reason for that is pretty simple. It is the most chord defining note. There's also another tone that jazz teachers will tell you, play on the thirds and sevens, play on the third and sevens, man, which is also a portion of the truth. The seventh gives you more of um, the modality of, uh, I think that's a correct technical term, the modality uh, or tonality, I'm not sure, but the E note gives you the most bang for your buck. Because if you just play the tonic, if I just play the C during a solo, nothing's much gonna happen. If I just play the seventh, nothing much is gonna happen. If I play the fourth, the fifth, except any other tone, don't give you, it doesn't give you as much information. Especially, we get a third degree, a lot of information, and the context in which this third degree is played gives you a whole bunch of information. In technical reasons, which I, I don't want to go into detail in this video for now. So the short uh, the shortcut is alright, the chord's gonna hit. And my aim at that point is not to hit and then start thinking about this friggin' bowl. No, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is actually take my brain a bar before and that's when the chord C happens. I will attempt to put the E note right there and to go into it with a resolution. One of my favorite resolutions to do is a note above. You guys know me. I like to do a 1, 2, 3, F, E, 2, 3, F, 4, again, 2, 3, F, E, Cut three, right? And by doing this, what I start to hear is a beautiful five to one resolution that we get for free. Yeah, guys are like, oh, I should do third and sevens. Like, well, if you do the third correctly, you only need one chip, one one scrabble thing in that bowl. You only need the E because check this out. We are on a G seven chord right before the E. Five to one, two, five, one. If I do the five to one, the F note is actually the seventh of my G chord. F, E, F, E. So by doing a one note above approach, I'm naturally doing the seventh of G7, going down to the third of C major for free, without having to think about the seventh. See what I'm saying? So instead of two tiles, I have one still, all right? Another approach, another thing I really like to do is to go down and scale into that E note. So I will look at E, I'll go up F, G, A, and then I will do the three notes down. Right, so let's do this in time. A one, 
a two, a one, two, three, and four, and one. Together. If you guys are fancy, you can do an A flat. Yes, the A flat is the flat line of G7. So instead of thinking in terms of the score happens, and now what am I allowed to play on it, like as a formula, what I do instead is backtrack, see where I want to resolve, and build a line from it. What the line is becomes less of a plug and play, like what chord scale should I use issue, although I can do that, but it becomes less of an issue and more an issue of where are we going. Everything is a pickup. Everything is a pickup. So while I play, some of the students have noted, they say, hey Mark, this is similar, almost as you play all the time when you improvise in master classes and groups and whatnot, I would just like build tension when stuff happens and then put it down at the resolution point. And then my next line will only start sort of, at the, sort of as a pickup in order to build that tension in order to resolve to the next and build the tension in order to resolve to the next. So seldom will you hear me start a, a two five one and start something on the beat one, on one. I will do it on the two and on the five and on the one I just simply resolve. That's where there's less stuff to do because it's less interesting because tension has already been resolved. Here's another also counter argument. People tell me, well, Mark, now I'm a C major. What about the notes of the arpeggio? Yeah, C, D, E, B, or C, D, B, A, that's a C6, right? And, and some people will think and argue that, well, since those are the four correct notes of the chord that are happening in the chord, if I only play on arpeggio notes, then therefore I will be perfectly chord defining, which again is only a part of the truth, because yes, I will be correct according to the harmony, only playing the notes that are harmonized going in the harmony like this. And if we look at a chord progression, there's always four notes, four, that's the next chord, another chord, another chord. Although this is true, have you ever tried to play that way? Yeah, I have, maybe you have. And I have students that have and go like, yeah, I know all the arpeggios, I know all inversions of arpeggios, I can play in 16th notes, I can do three, five, seven, nine instead of one, three, five, seven. And yet my solo, my solo goes, yeah, why is that? Well, because you are not resolving. If I have a chord progression like a 2-5, I'm just going to play it once here, to a 5, to a C. Watch out, and I just do arpeggios. It's, it sounds okay, right? Because I'm within the chords, but while I skip to that next note line, arpeggio line, like C, E, G, B, well, while I jump that, I may be avoiding other necessary melodic resolutions, namely getting on the thirds. If I do that, I'm avoiding these resolutions because I'm always going, no, 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 I gotta juggle all these notes. And people say, no, no, don't juggle these notes. Now start to do enclosures, okay? <laughs> Uh, I'm like, yeah, this is this could work, but it doesn't give you that melodic juice. So think again. We went from these, and I'm telling you, no, 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 go for the one, just the one, one. There's one lone chip in the bowl, and you guys have been saying, well, what about two? What if I think of the B and the E? I'm telling you the third and the seventh, it's not even necessary to do it. You can just focus on the third. You just focus on one. And then we just had, sort of, had the argument, what about the arpeggios? I'm going, you insist on having four chips in that bowl while well, you can just have one. Have the one, make sure that your resolutions are coming nicely, and then the rest will take care of itself. And that's exactly how I teach. This is exactly how people in my programs have been having the best results in the past for probably say five years. And this is exactly how I learned to play. And you guys want arpeggios? Yeah. If you want to do an arpeggio, such as the G7, why not do, why not go one, three, five, flat seven of G, down to the third of C, then your arpeggio is resolved. Or even, right, you do an arpeggio of G7 from the fifth, and you are doing part of the arpeggio to, to hear the F to E resolution. So it's always possible to use a part of a scale and to use a part of an arpeggio or both to create a resolution to that lone chip to the third. Now, of course, this is not a secret. This is not uh, the cure-all and all, but it's a really, really great place to start. Later down the line, when you're able to do that systematically and always hit the third on the beat, what you're gonna start to wanna do is, well, maybe I wanna delay that resolution. Maybe I don't wanna resolve on the third now. I wanna wait until B2. 
it becomes timing issues and phrasing issues and bebop stuff, right? And then maybe uh, now this round, like I hear the fifth of the chord rather than the third. Okay, fine, go for it. Okay, good. And maybe I want to anticipate that resolution to the third, okay? Maybe the way I get into that is through a G7, a G7 altered. So instead of just plainly going, maybe I go, right? Maybe there's something that's really, really more tense for much longer. Maybe uh, in the end, and I love, <laughs> thank you, Gilad, you've been, you know, one of my inspirations forever. Gilad Hexelman said he even goes at length to friggin' stretch out on a chord and it doesn't resolve it. Like, dude, you know, you left us hanging for effect, but as a choice, not as something you always do. So when I got, personally, when I got really good at targeting the thirds, doing it systematically in tempo, and then finding ways to weave in and out of that third resolution, using parts of scales to get in, using part of arpeggios to get in, then once I got good at anticipating or delaying these thirds, and eventually I got good at tensing up and not even resolving, when I got good at that, stuff got clear as far as jazz improv. And I gotta tell you, the more, and that's, that's gonna be my final tip for today. And by the way, if you enjoyed this video, just uh, like and subscribe and share it with anyone you think might like the video. We're trying to go uh, for 100K subscribers, which is a, a pretty lofty goal, but this should happen hopefully by the end of, you know, by summer 2024, the end of 2024. I'm prophesizing. But the last tip I will tell you is if you keep insisting on coming into a chord and boom, the chord happens and you're trying to plug some information, you're missing a big, big, big part of the picture of jazz improv. Because if we go to the records, this is not how the guys played. Not at all, actually. They set themselves up and placed that chord of resolution in the future and played lines into these chords. That's really how jazz is played. And it's also how chess is played. You know, they say, how many moves ahead can you see? Well, that's sort of the, the game of playing jazz improv. And what do we do to win the game? Well, I get in my practice room and I just friggin' drill using Scrabble tiles. I just drill these things until they become second nature so that when I get to a solo, I have the choice. Do I want to resolve on the third on that beat? Do I want to use a scale to get into that third descending or an arpeggio or something else? The choice is mine. But if I only look at, again, this, nothing much will come out of it. And you might already be aware of that, but I was aware of that as a player. I'm like, there's got to be a simpler way, man. There's got to be a simpler way. And the simpler way is one tile in your bowl, not seven. All right? On that note, I will let you go, guys. Thank you for watching. My name is Mark from Jazz Guitar Lessons. Plenty more free lessons, blog podcasts, tunes, arpeggio stuff, licks on the blog, jazzguitarlessons.net, uh, jazzguitarlessons.net slash blog. And I will see you soon on this channel. Take care. Bye.